So normally in surveillance report, we start with like, hello everyone or something like that. And on my channel, everything is heavily scripted. So this is gonna be the least scripted video I've done so far. So welcome viewers. For those of you who follow me on Twitter or Mastodon, I have been teasing that I was going to do a Q and A with my partner for Valentine's day. Hello. <laughs> and uh, at the last moment, she decided she wanted it to be a video. So for those of you who prefer video content, you will get a much less scripted video version of this. And for those of you who prefer text, you're probably not watching this and there will be a uh, transcript on the blog. This is my partner. Hi. Hi, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> and I am going to ask her reader submitted questions about our relationship and privacy. So this seemed like a good place to start. How do you feel about the whole quote privacy thing? I, you know, I, I, I apologize. I, I, thought of an answer and I guess just I don't know like when you first introduced it to me it was kind of scary like to realize that oh shit, all of this stuff is happening <laughs> behind the scenes and I had no idea <laughs> now it's kind of part of my day-to-day -day life I guess for other people who are also into like actually into privacy like you it just kind of feels like an everyday thing now for the record that just reaffirms my belief that more people would care if they knew how bad it was. I, I firmly believe that a lot of people who say like, oh, I have nothing to hide or I don't really care. It's like, you don't care because you don't understand how invasive it is. Yeah, and especially like me, remember when I got like really scared, I had my privacy scare because I thought that my job was like looking at my text messages and I was like, oh my God. And I think after that, I started using a VPN more or something. But I think it was one of those things that they could only see if you're logged in the Wi-Fi or something. And I think we had like an employee Wi-Fi and I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> it's like, well, I'm gonna start using a VPN because I don't want to use my data. So I'm still gonna be logged into the Wi-Fi, but you can't see me. Though I think it was just an empty threat. Funny enough, I did actually read that blog where I mentioned that the other day. Um, that night you downloaded Signal and Proton VPN on your phone <laughs> and invited all your, or you had Signal, but you invited all your coworkers to Signal. So the next question is how much of my security posture has rubbed off on you? Security posture in the sense of like all the stuff I do, like using VPNs and Linux and v uh, Signal and stuff like that. I guess, yeah, just the things that were listed, Proton VPN and Signal. And I guess also I do, because since, you know, you're the more technical one between us, so you know what you're looking for, I do allow him to actually get on my computer and my phone for like any tracker kind of situation with like what Windows and Firefox and, and things like that with the phone. I, I can't really remember, but occasionally you'll use my phone to at least, you know, like look up a private, like look up whatever. And I'm just like, you know, I, I mean, I guess just kind of those things just again, Signal and, and Proton VPN, and then whatever it is that you feel that you need to do to keep me safe. So, yeah. You know, I have actually been thinking about challenging you to, um, just for like a week, try uh, Pop! OS Linux. <laughs> Didn't you actually have me like do a VM or something? Of, or was it Pop! OS or was it something else? It, it was Mint. So Mint and Pop are both based on either Ubuntu or Debian, which is basically the same thing because Ubuntu is based on Debian. But Pop is designed by System76 and it's explicitly geared towards content creators and gamers and stuff like that. So they've really gone out of their way to make sure that like Steam and stuff like that works with oh, Pop yes. OS. Yes, I remember Pop OS. You've definitely suggested that one to me before. My only experience with Linux at all was the very little time that I spent on that VM that you gave me a while back. I remember- if anything, I would probably want to do it the way that you kind of have it on your computer, where you have like a Windows side and a Linux side, just so that way I can kind of like get a better idea of fully of what I'm messing with. Well, through a virtual machine, it would, um, it would have to be a very powerful computer. But if you had enough hard drive space, we could totally just do. What you can do is it's called a partition. You can just cut the hard drive in half, basically. Yeah. Yeah. And then, yeah, and then you can make one partition Linux and one partition Windows. And then the only thing I use Windows for is production and gaming, and I do everything else on Linux. I kind of have a partition now because of Veracrypt. Yeah, basically. I know some tech stuff. <laughs> Got a badass over here. <laughs> okay, we kind of touched on this already. What privacy advice did you actually end up implementing in your life? Yeah, Signal and, and Proton VPN. That, well, actually, 
I remember you set up a proton mail for me, so I guess that kind of counts in a way. Yeah, you've been using that a lot. Oh more. yeah, and simple login too. I just remembered that. Oh yeah, you actually asked me about that one. <laughs> yeah, and and privacy cards. I was about to say that privacy. Yeah, privacy.com. So yeah, there's a lot more than just those two things. So little by little. Very little by little until you like, actually came to me about the simple login one because you were like, what was it? Was it like spam? You were like, hey, is there something I can use to like blah blah blah? I don't, I don't remember what the question was, but I just remember you asked me, and I'm like. Simple login. I vaguely remember that, but I don't remember the question at all. And yeah. yeah, that's when you're just like, simple login. What compromises have you had to make with me for privacy? This should be a fun one. I had trouble thinking on this question when I first received the questions. I feel like you've made more compromises than I have. <laughs> well, I say that because... Like, I mean, that is... Uh, yeah, that's true. I'll be honest. <laughs> what? Well, the reason why I say that is because like... For anybody who's watching this who is a privacy person and they're kind of wanting their partner to also be very, like, you know, kind of privacy centric, it is kind of like that whole, like, trying to compromise thing, too. But you also have to, like, let your partner be their own person. Definitely one of the biggest compromises, I think, is definitely TikTok. Do we compromise on that? <laughs> I mean, in a way, because I guess to me, you could always be worse and just like not want me to have that ever or something or I mean, I just I be, well, <laughs> be mean about it though. Yeah. There's a difference between like at the time of recording right now, I am currently actively doing a social media cleanse. I uninstalled TikTok, Instagram, Facebook like a, a few social media apps that I, I know that I'm just... I just want to jump in before the people in the comments. I was the first one to say, good, keep it that way. <laughs> I beat you to it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that was fun. No, because like, I feel like if you had more of your way, you just would not let me have that app at all. Like, yes, sure, right now I don't have it because I'm really wanting to test out this social media cleanse. And honestly, today it's been it, it's been great. Again, I just feel like you compromise more. Like, if it wasn't for me, we wouldn't have a smart, or well, not really a smart TV, more of just a Roku TV. Compromises have mostly been on your side rather than mine. Some people might find it a little bit more invasive that, you know, I allow you to see my phone and things in it, but I trust you fully. And I'm just like, I know that you would never somehow block TikTok or whatever. <laughs> when I do access your phone, like you said, if I'm checking, like, I want to see if there's a certain setting or I want to see, like today I was checking to see if there's a certain app in the Play Store. What privacy measures do I take that you find the most annoying? Or what privacy measures that I take do you find the most annoying? That probably would fall more under the compromise one because mm. I really, really loved using Google Assistant on my Android. Mm. And like, that's kind of, I guess, a compromise for me as I took, it's just like, I don't really do that anymore. But I really just loved Google Assistant in the sense of like some of the funny things that she would say. The biggest thing, the f***ing VPN on the damn internet. It was just one of those things for me, especially when we first got the router, you were messing with it so much. See, that and I just can like, understand. And it was just like- That I, was a rough setup. <laughs> mostly because if I remember correctly, like I was on an off day and I just wanted to like do whatever on the computer or phone or whatever. And I could not do it because there was no fucking internet. And I was so trying not to just <laughs> scream at you. I was like, please just stop. Let me have my day off. I just, you could do this tomorrow. I don't care. I'll go back. I'll be at work tomorrow. Like I was so mad about it. That was a lesson I did have to learn to wait until you weren't having a day off. If any of y'all ever get that router that he has. DDWRT. Okay. Please make sure that anybody in your household that also uses the internet, don't torment them with this because it was a very difficult setup. It was really hard for me. It was that and I guess I'm irritated about the VPN because of so many issues we've had with it. Really, I think it's just those two. And I mean like, granted, I kind of would have liked to Google Home, but that's a dream that's dead like from years ago. So it's fine. Yeah, I'm sorry. That's a no. That's a no for me. <laughs> that's a no for me, dog. I've asked my mom to unplug the Alexa whenever we visit. Oh, yeah. No, I remember that, actually. <laughs> On that note, where do you draw the line between privacy and convenience? That's a great question because I don't know because I don't think that line has been crossed. I guess in the way that's kind of already been answered because the whole internet thing. There's not really anything that you have done that has completely just impacted my life, like severely, where I'm just like, 
mad, mad. I mean, there's small inconveniences, but those are usually fixed. Uh, <laughs> this one was kind of random. What do you think about Linux phones? Like, my Pine phone is a Linux phone. I don't have an opinion because I've never messed with it, so I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I would, I would love to answer, but it's just I don't have an opinion. Like, if I ever got it working, I don't know if I would like it. I mean, mostly because I just don't have any experience with Linux as a whole. Like, very little experience at all. I can say from my experience, I'd, the Pine phone is not ready for the average user. But in terms of, like, a Linux-like experience, it really depends on which one you go with. Because, like, Ubuntu Touch, for example, you can't use the terminal. It's actually so locked down, it is not designed to work that way. You have to use all the graphic interface stuff, like the App Store and stuff. So, like, something like that, once it's a little more polished... I'd, I think would be assuming it had all the same apps and everything it would be virtually indistinguishable from like an Android or an iPhone it would just be another option but yeah then there's other ones like Mobian that are very heavy on the terminal and that's a much more like traditional Linux like experience at least in my experience I'm sure someone in the comments will correct me but if the day comes when it does become more user friendly version or just like something that won't take a lot out of my day to day you know it's just like that i don't have to use a terminal or something to update all of this stuff and it just kind of updates automatically or at least tells me that it needs an update if it's something more like that this is kind of a random one too do you watch surveillance report i saw that one and i <laughs> laughed so much and my answer to that is i kind of technically have a front row seat to at least half of it, so no. My surveillance report is technically this anyway. <laughs> I don't need to listen to the podcast when I live with like one half of, of the team. So, no. <laughs> the last question, and uh, I save this for last because this is a difficult question that people ask a lot. What made you care about privacy? Or in other words, how can someone like me, who cares about privacy, convince the people around them who don't care about privacy to care? That is a difficult question because I didn't truly start caring until it affected me. Literally, you just kind of have... So, I'm going to sound very braggy here, I'll be honest. The only reason that I managed to get one of his friends on Signal at all was because I knew how to kind of work it in such a way that it does this and that and whatever like there's these things that i like about it personally that maybe you might like about it like recently with tiktok videos especially them a lot of them being three minutes long for example like he doesn't have tiktok but there are some tiktoks that i find that i really want to share with him since you don't have the app and you'd rather me just like not send them to you with a link anyway i just download the video if i can and then just send it to you and i can actually send it versus if it's just regular MMS, you can't do that because it's just like, oh, the video's too big. I can't handle it. And Signal, on the other hand, is over here like, la, 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 and just like doing the thing. You know, it's just like, we just got to maybe compress it a little bit, but it's fine. It doesn't matter. And the voice message, too, like the voice message feature. Like, I know most phones already have that, but I've run into a problem with at least if I'm sending a voice message to someone either like on Instagram or even Facebook Messenger, you can't do that. You can't send long voice messages. You have a very limited amount of time to do that. It's just really hard to get someone to care. It really is. It's kind of like the whole, you can't help people who don't wanna be helped thing. If somebody is just stubborn like that and they don't wanna hear about it, they don't care, no matter how many times you try to drill it in their head that Facebook is bad and this is bad, the way that you're doing this thing, if it has not affected them personally yet, it's not going to matter. Again, I didn't start using Proton VPN or get really, really terrified about my privacy being invaded until I was told to my face that my job reads my text messages. We all love our creature comforts and unfortunately, a lot of them are very invasive, very privacy invasive. I usually just say, hey, here's an app. You can download it if you want to, you know, like Signal. Here's all the things I like about it. And if they still don't get it, then I'm just like, okay, keep fighting the fight. This is not me saying stop fighting because this is your passion. Clearly a lot of people care because otherwise <laughs> we would not be sitting here right now talking about <laughs> privacy. I think just for viewers, the part of that that really jumped out to me, and this is something I've noticed when you get people on Signal, 
is you focus, like you said, on the features. And this is more for the viewers, but like a lot of people criticize Signal, for example, because it, it does have shortcomings like requiring a phone number. They promised us usernames like three years ago or maybe even more than that. What the heck, guys? But as she's pointed out, like all these features they keep prioritizing that seem really stupid that nobody wanted, like Giphy integration. I remember when that rolled out, I was like, oh, okay, that's kind of neat, I guess, whatever. That friend she mentioned, she abuses Giphy. <laughs> she uses it so much. And like, those are the little features that, that reel people in. Like, sure, it appeals to the privacy people, but when we're trying to spread privacy to the average person, they want the features. I kind of like the fact that Signal focuses on the features because that's what's gonna reel in people that maybe don't care about their privacy as much, or at least not right now. But now they've got that protection because they're like, oh, all my friends are on Signal. I can join group chats. I can send massive video files because I've run into that too. Even just taking short videos at work and be like, oh, let me send this to my coworker. And it's like, can't work. And I'm like, what the heck? And then I send it on Signal and it's like, no problem. Those little features get them in. And it's almost one of those things where to an extent, I personally don't even care what gets people to start using this stuff. It's a net win for them and for everybody when they start protecting their privacy, even if they're doing it inadvertently. That's, I don't know, that's my opinion, but. Go look at all of the things that you use and be like, these are, features are amazing. And this is what makes it amazing for me. The way that people are wired in that way is that they wanna know why something works for you and how they can also benefit from it. That's why everybody loves Facebook because they benefit from it. It's just one of those things and especially like people who are, could potentially be making other products for, for privacy. Figure out what you can do to get the average person who doesn't really care about privacy, see what you can do to just market that. Why do I want Signal on my phone? Why should I use it? I don't know anybody who's using it. Features are always important. That's why when you go to an app store, they always list that, either things that they've updated, of course, or the features currently. And that's just really good for people to read. They might not read it, or mostly because they might've heard it from another source, so they don't really, it doesn't really matter at that point. That concludes all the questions. Do you have anything else you wanted to say? If anybody from an average, person here not all into privacy completely if anybody ever has any more questions for me just you know ask him and i can definitely respond i i mean i don't mind being asked these questions especially on a daily basis it's times like these where i'm just like maybe i should join the matrix chat room <laughs> you would be welcome I know. they like you I know. all right well i think we'll call that a wrap thank you guys for watching hope that answered your questions and helps you guys to connect with the less privacy enthusiastic people in your own life. So, adios.